Hello, there, it's Jason Gorman from Codemanship here with a short screencast about test-driven development as if you meant it. First, a plug, take a look at this webpage, go to softwarecraftsmanship.org.uk or go to the Codemanship homepage. You'll find all the details of the upcoming Software Craftsmanship 2012 conference, which is at Bletchley Park on June the 14th. Uh, that's the plug out of the way. You don't get nothing for nothing in this world. Um, so TDD as if you meant it was a, a workshop that was first run by Keith Braithwaite from Zulka Engineering um, at the 2009 Software Craftsmanship Conference. And the basic idea behind it, as I understand it, and Keith, if you're watching and I've got it wrong, by all means, correct me. But the basic idea is that people ra um, tend, when they do TDD, to have a preconceived idea about what the design they're going to end up with should look like. So they think, oh, we're going to need these classes and these methods and these interfaces. Now, um, it's a good discipline to um, be able to discover design through the process of refactoring. And this is an exercise in discovering the design entirely through refactoring. So all of the abstractions we introduce into our code, like uh, methods and parameters and interfaces and classes and so on, get introduced entirely through the process of refactoring to eliminate code smells, in particular to eliminate duplicate code. Now, to demonstrate what uh, I think Keith means by this, let's do a simple example. Um, this is the famous Fibonacci sequence generator cata. Write some code to generate the Fibonacci sequence to a specified length that's no shorter than 8 and no longer than 50. So I'm going to ask for a sequence of a certain length. When a sequence of length, um, well, let's say it's a sequence of 8, is requested, then length is 8. Okay. If you're not familiar with this code cat, then just Google it. You'll, you'll, you'll find lots of examples. Um, so we're going to test the length of our Fibonacci sequence that's being um, generated. And let's use a local variable to store our sequence. Let's keep it simple. Let's make it an integer array. And let's initialize that. Now I want to initialize this first of all to see the test fail. So I'm going to deliberately use a sequence of the wrong length so that I can see this test fail. Uh, lo and behold, it fails, and for the reasons that I think that it should. So it's a good test. Right. Now, this is where people get a little unstuck with TDDs if you meant it. Keith tells us to write the code to pass the test inside the test. So we do the simplest thing possible here to pass this test. Now, that looks a little weird, but bear with us. Now, I haven't at this point really introduced any code smells, so um, I've not got permission to do any refactoring yet. Let's move on and do a second test. I'm going to triangulate on the sequence length. So let's do 9. Let's make that a capital L, shall we, so we can make it a bit more readable. And now let's follow a similar process to ask if the length of the sequence is 9. Declare the local variable sequence and initialize it in the first instance to see the test fail. And there we go, the test fails and for the right reason. So it's a good test. And again, we do the simplest thing possible inside the test to pass the test. Now that looks a little strange. We've got two separate lines of code that do that are totally disjoint at the moment. And so of course both of these tests pass. But we have introduced a code smell. We've introduced some duplication into our tests. And so we have permission now to eliminate that code smell through refactoring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself permission to extract a method. Let's call it generate sequence because that's what that block of code does. So I extract that method, and in order to eliminate the duplication, I have to make it reusable for both of these test cases. So I'm going to parameterize it to accept a specified length. And that now means that I can go into here and substitute this code with a call to this method that means exactly the same thing. So we've introduced an abstraction, a method, a parameterized method, specifically to remove some duplicate code. And we can see that a design might be beginning to emerge. 
we now have a method. Um, now, I'm looking at this Fibonacci test class, and I'm thinking, this class now does more than one thing, really. It's, it's a test class, but it's also a Fibonacci sequence generator. So it, it's divergent change is the name of the code smell. It breaks the single responsibility principle, which is that classes should only have one reason to change, only one distinct responsibility. So I now give myself permission to do more refactoring. I'm going to imagine that there is such a thing as a Fibonacci sequence generator. Like so. Um, and so essentially what I'm doing is I'm, I'm extracting this new class. Um, and this becomes the target for a move method. I can move this generate sequence method across to our new class. It'll change the visibility of the method. That's fine. And so what we end up with is a new class, Fibonacci sequence generator, whose responsibility is to generate the Fibonacci sequence. And Fibonacci tests, whose responsible is, responsibility is to test the generation of Fibonacci sequence generators. Now, there's a little bit of a test smell here, which is a shared object between these two tests. The danger is that as we share instances between tests without reinitializing each time, um, that if this if this object takes on any state, we could end up with tests that have to be run in a certain order. So in order to isolate this test, I'm going to actually going to use an anonymous instance of the Fibonacci sequence generator, like so, instead of the field. And that means that we no longer need the shared field, and our tests are now isolated. There's one other thing that I'm a little unhappy about before I move on to the next test, and that is the location of this Fibonacci sequence generator class. Um, now, I personally believe um, and that the single responsibility design principle applies at multiple levels of code organization. That is to say, it applies at the method level, at the class level, and also at the package level. So I think that we have a package here with mixed responsibilities. One, part of it's about testing and part of it's about generating Fibonacci sequences. So what I'm going to do to f just to finish off here is I'm going to move this class into another package. I'm just going to put it here just for jolly um, to separate the responsibilities. So there you go. That, to me, is my understanding of TDD as if you meant it. The design emerges entirely through the process of refactoring. It's entirely feedback-driven. And hopefully, if we do it well, what we end up with is um, the cleanest code that will pass the tests.